One of the things So always wanted to do since the very beginning was to take things like mallet instruments, which people within the percussion community have been writing music for for a long time, and take them to composers who are known in the outside world for operas and symphonies and string quartets and things like that, seeing what it would be like for them to transfer their ideas into these instruments. Jason was saying, oh hey, if you want to try out any stuff with us, we're, 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 we're more than happy to go through it. So I actually started writing for them. And I think they were shocked when I came into their first rehearsal because I had loads of it written out. Because I think they were often used to composers coming in and going, yeah, let's try that sound. But I already had a fair kind of idea what I wanted to do. Donica is a composer who sets his ideas down on paper very well and in a very specific way. But still, we worked on snippets and sketches. We worked on ideas so that he could see and hear what they felt like. Instantly in that rehearsal, I could see that they were pretty good at doing certain things and I really wanted to elaborate upon them in the piece. And one that shocked me was how good they were at doing these super fast cannons. The way he writes for percussion instruments has the kind of clarity of Steve Reich, but his ideas are constantly unfolding and, and branching the way that Mozart does. You kind of never know which way a twist or turn can take you within the piece, which is a little different than a composer like Steve Reich. That's part of what makes Donica's voice really unique. I mean, I always like to film audience member comes to this like with a clean slate. I think so much hap so much is great if you just come to a piece with a clean slate because I'm a big believer that a piece teaches you how to listen to it.